Hello! Lost Model Finders again! Yes, I'm very keen that no one ever lose their drones. Surely I've I've covered everything now, or almost. Um, T-Beacon was one of the names that kept popping up and up and certain people absolutely loved them. Their normal T-Beacon things works on a, a radio frequency one. This is not what this one's about, although that's that's going to be coming out later. That's the, the normal T-Beacon uh, radio thingy. But when I talked to T-Beacon about doing this, they said they had a new product called the Buzzy Boo and it's not been released yet, which I have here. Uh, and this is what it looks like when you get it out of the bag. It's pretty nondescript. It's basically a beeper on a circuit board and you get some little pin headers there you can attach to it and also a tiny battery. Now the problem with it being a non-release product is um, T Beacon is Russian based and he sent a, a bunch of these out to some Russian guys to review it um, and I've watched one of those reviews and obviously I, I, well, not obviously I don't speak Russian so I tried putting the YouTube generated subtitles on and it was kind of this bizarre speech and uh, what Constantine told me, who's the guy that makes these, is it was like a slang Russian. So it's like even the YouTube auto, <laughs> it both an auto captioner and auto translator just didn't get what was going on. So I had these weird and wacky things. Well, it's several weeks later and the good news is that Constantine has drafted out the English instructions. And I'm glad he has because there's quite a lot to it involving flow diagrams and button presses and different times. Um, and I was just testing out. So I've connected up the battery here um, and I've got the, the pin headers are on but not soldered and I'll, I'll need to do that. Now one of the interesting things in with this which I didn't know about is it's a little bit like two other beepers. If you remember the Drone Keeper Mini or the Drone Keeper Micro, that worked on not being attached to the quad and had a little accelerometer in it and if it stopped moving for a certain amount of time it would start beeping. That does this but it also attaches and then acts like a normal beep type beeper. So this is very similar to the Hellgate in that manner of speaking. So you attach it, it acts like a normal beeper. If it loses power it will start to beep but it also has the functionality still of the accelerometer so if that um, stops moving for a certain amount of time it will start to beep and th the whole setup's done through a combination of pressing this little button and tapping it and you can do all the programming for how you want it um, just all from this which I think is pretty neat um, let's go down for a close-up and I'll show you how it works. Just wanted to show what was in the packaging. You've got the main unit here and the battery sits on that bit. Underneath is the circuit board and you see you've got some heat shrink and the battery, some stickers and the pin headers. Okay, so I've just put the pin headers on the buzzy bow there and I've gone ahead and shrink wrapped over the top. Let's say this really good shrink wrap, just a touch of um, heat and the whole thing just shrank really fast all over it and uh, really easy to see and stuff. Obviously I like this because the battery, should it wear out, you can obviously get a new one uh, of a similar size. Uh, of course if you're going to install this on a particular model you might just want to solder directly on. With this I'm probably going to be outside of the quad most of the time but I just wanted to show it as a uh, how you could attach it to beta flight as well. Quite you got quite a lot of setup you can do here. Um, here's the manual. You see, once you get to the setup uh, menu, you can do different tones. You've got choices about the type of uh, beta flight, inverted, non inverted, and how many minutes the alarm's going to go of not charging. You've got the motion timeout, which you can disable or go from one to nine minutes. And if you're supplying five volts, you can do like an immediate alarm or disable that or however many minutes. Uh, so what you've got here, you've got this little button on the side and doing that just turns it on normally and if you hold it down for five seconds it turns off. If you want to get to the settings menu you just hold it in until it makes a funny noise and it makes this chirp. The first chirp is uh, buzzer calibration so for example if I go and do the motion timeout which is three chirps there's two chirps there's three chirps so if I now do a long press so it's telling me it's one minute and I can then change that to two minutes there's nine minutes 
two long beats is disabled and I just go back to one minute. What I'll do is long press to get at that and then I've got to get through the rest of the menu up to five chirps, long press, saves that. So uh, let's let it go off now. I'm just going to put it down there and wait one minute without moving. So it's quite a distinctive tone. I just want to show there's two ways of turning it off. The first is you can hold down that button for five minutes. The second one's got this bizarre thing you can do with the accelerometer. So if you just tap it twice, it'll ask you to repeat itself. And copying that three times will turn it off like that. I guess if you've got access to here but you can't get to the button, that's something you might want to do. I can't really see it myself, but it's 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 different. Otherwise you can just obviously hold that button down. So in testing, I'm gonna use this just as is, but I just wanna show you how it would connect into Betaflight. So what I've got here is just a bit of a, a mock-up. I've got a flight controller, I've got a receiver, I've got a servo lead, which is connected to uh, ground, 5 volts and buzzer minus. This is exactly the same sort of wiring as the, the Hellgate buzzer takes. And let me give it some power and I can show you how this acts exactly like a normal buzzer. So you see it does the normal beeps when it's ready to go. So if I was to go ahead and change modes we get a nice little thing. If I was going to beeper mode get it away from now so beep mode as you'd expect and of course what happens if you then lose power is first it starts doing this little chirping and it has a specific timeout for five volt blackout after that setting which i can't remember what it is by default but not particularly long it will start going So I'll turn this off the other way by holding down the button this time. And that's off. Anyway, let's go to the field now and test out and see how it does. Hello and welcome back to the field on another scorching day. It's absolutely gorgeous, but very, very hot. Here today to test the little TV can buzzy though. You see, I've just got that rubber banded on. Uh, one of its options, you can plug it into Peter Flight, you can just shove it on a quad um, and I've got the little B-Flight 210 here B-Flight 210 still one of my favorite quads so inexpensive as well Gearbest seem to run sort of random price generator but occasionally this goes down to like under a hundred pounds which is an absolute steal so check it out and if it's expensive come back next week and it'll probably be cheaper so traditionally I've been dumping the quad over there in the corner but um, given the grass is all short I thought what I'd do is what I did last time and use the sort of undergrowth down there to sort of ditch it in. Gives more of a sort of a proper impression of a, a sort of slightly buried crash. Um, I'm going to be simulating a, a sort of battery disconnect. Obviously the battery will stay in, but um, I'm just going to wait for the beep to go off. I'm not going to use my radio. Um, so let's see what happens. It's not too windy today, a little bit of a breeze, so hopefully the sound should carry quite well. Let's find out. Right, so up we go, up in the air, and I have to say, I can't resist flying this. This is back at the far end of the field where I'd normally dump it, where there's no, no there's no good dumping spots because it's too short. So let's go and fly down here. I'm stood in the middle where there's this sort of a line there. And uh, it's nice to fly the little B5 again. I haven't flown it for a while, and it handles really quite nicely. Uh, this little fence here, if you saw my previous videos on uh, micro cameras, this is actually a reptile fence they're suggesting. I don't know if they've noticed but they've got a slight hole in it. So I've picked a little spot away from the fence just so I can really dunk it in this long grass undergrowth here. Sort of typical of a normal crash. Okay so we're down on the ground over there somewhere. Um, I'm not using the microphone here. Two reasons. Uh, one because it tends to uh, pick up uh, some sort of interference from the radio. Secondly it tends to mute out the actual beeper itself so 
I thought I'd just go along like this, but I didn't expect to hear it yet. It's been down about a minute, so it should start going off about now. So we'll walk over that way and see what's going on. Well, if I really concentrate, I can just about hear this little beep coming from that way, but not, not distinct enough to really pick out a location yet, but pretty far. Can you hear it? The different tones really do help um, make it sound different than everything going out around it. So it's quite distinctively coming from there. Uh, hopefully you can hear it now, it's pretty damn loud from here. Interesting, because I actually thought it was about there that I ditched it, but very obviously coming from about here. Oh, check it out, I've got it upside down and everything. Okay, pretty happy with that. Fairly loud, fairly directional. I really like the several tone thing. It was really directional as you got closest to it. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. Well, I started this video quite a few weeks ago and at that point, the Buzzy Bow wasn't out and it didn't have any instructions. And we've sort of gone through the life cycle. So it's now out, it's on the website and it costs 17 99 plus shipping. So I kind of like this because it tries to do everything. It's got, and I'll hold up the Drone Keeper Mini because it's quite similar in size and relatively similar in function. It's got the motion detection, which it uses, and that means you don't have to have it plugged in, which I quite like in my situation. It's got the legacy style, so if you were to plug this in a PWM channel of a plane, like an aileron channel, you can set it so it will alarm after a certain amount of nothing's happening on that channel. Um, and of course, it's got the, if you're, charging it via the PWM pins and it suddenly loses that charge, then it will start to alarm, which is all pretty good and covers use for most things. So to carry on bleeping for about 24 hours, it reckons, I haven't tested that, but that's a fair old amount of time to try and find it. The thing I generally like about this most is its tone. It's several different tones that it produces make it a little bit easier to find than just the standard beep. It just stands out in the air a little bit longer. Um, although I do notice now the web page is up, I'll, I'll put a link down below. Uh, they, there's also instructions to how to upgrade the firmware, so um, perhaps uh, Constantine may add a few more things. We'll have to look and see. Anyway, this has been the T-Beacon Buzzy Boo, and I'll be talking about the, the, the main T-Beacon finder later on. But uh, for now, check it out if you want to. Hope that's been of help, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.